In this video, we're going to discuss the water cycle. In particular, we're going to focus on two parts of the water cycle called infiltration and runoff. Well, just to start as an overview, the water cycle is the circulation of water between Earth's surface and atmosphere. All of the water that Earth currently has has been the same water that Earth had when water first formed on our planet, which is absolutely amazing, which is due to the water cycle. So this is just a generic diagram of the water cycle. We're going to start with one specific term called transpiration. Transpiration is just the evaporation of water from any plant, leaf, tree, or grassy surface. On the other hand, you have traditional evaporation, where you have water from a lake, ocean, or river that goes up into the atmosphere. So both evaporation and transpiration take liquid water from the surface, whether it's on a water surface or a plant-like surface, and brings it up into the atmosphere into water vapor. When you have all this water vapor into the atmosphere, condensation is the next process that takes that water vapor to form clouds. Eventually, those clouds can form precipitation, where the water returns back to Earth's surface in liquid form. Now, when water hits the surface, there's a few options. The first option is infiltration, where water goes into the ground. Or that water can become what we call runoff, which means that water stays on the surface of the Earth. The lesson for today is mainly the difference between infiltration and runoff and the factors that determine whether water goes into the ground as infiltration or stays on the surface as runoff. So looking at these two uh, pieces of the water cycle a little more closely, again runoff is when water that prevent the water from going into the ground so it stays on the surface as lakes, rivers, oceans, and even puddles after a rainstorm. Infiltration, on the other hand, means the water is going into the ground. So after a while, you don't even know that the water was there anymore because it's gone and was stored underneath the ground as something called groundwater. Now there's different factors that can influence whether water is going to infiltrate or become surface runoff. The first is the slope of the land. The second is the size of the soil particles that make up the ground. The next is the permeability of the soil, the saturation of your soil, and finally whether your ground is made up of vegetation. Throughout this lesson, you're going to see this symbol in your notes which has a t-chart and a pencil symbol which means you should be writing this into your notebook. We're going to make a t-chart so we can put the factors that will lead to either more runoff or more infiltration. So this is going to be an ongoing chart that we fill in as we go through the notes. So we're going to start with the first factor, which is the slope of the land. On the left side of the screen, you can see that that picture is showing a steep slope, while on the right side, that picture is showing a flat slope. When rain hits the surface with a steep slope, that rain is going to just run off of the slope. It's not going to be able to go into the ground. It's going to hit the ground and then keep sliding off. Think of a really awesome steep water slide. On the other hand, when rainwater hits a flat slope, there's going to be enough time for that water to hit the ground and then settle in and infiltrate the surface. So when you have a steep slope, you have more runoff. When you have a flat slope, you're going to have more infiltration. So make sure you go back to your t-charts and you add there's more runoff when you have a steeper slope, more infiltration when you have a flatter slope. The next factor is going to be soil particle or sediment size. So here we have three different sized sediments, small, medium, and large. And if water were to hit the top of these three columns of different sized sediments, the size is going to impact which one allows water to go through. So our question becomes, which size sediment will allow water to infiltrate, which means go through the easiest? On the right side of the screen, it's going to be an animation, and you can see behind the sediments that they're each filled with blue water. So each of the containers are filled to the top with water. When I press the play button, we're going to see which container allows the water to go through the easiest. That means you're going to have the most infiltration. 
So after viewing that animation, you can see that the large green sediments allow for the water to go through faster. The water was able to infiltrate more. So larger sediments allow for the most infiltration. So if you go back to our T-chart, you'll have more runoff where the soil is made up of small sediments. It's going to be really hard for water to get through smaller sediments. When you have larger sediments, the water will infiltrate a lot greater. So a ground consisting of large sediments, more infiltration. Another factor is permeability of soil, which means the ability of water to pass through. So it's very similar to the definition for for infiltration, which also means water to pass through the surface. In this animation that we're about to play, we have different types of sediments. We have gravel, sand, silt, and clay, which goes in size order. Gravel is the largest sediment, clay is the smallest. As we fill up these containers with water, take a look at what happens. The gravel allows for the most infiltration, which makes sense because the sediments are larger, but also that relates to permeability the ability to pass through. Water can pass through one meter of gravel in about two minutes. It takes two hours for water to pass through one meter of sand, 200 days for water to pass through one meter of silt, and 200 years for that water to pass through the clay, the smallest sized sediment. So in short, when we have the gravel, the largest sediments, very similar to more infiltration, it's going to be the most permeable. Water can infiltrate the gravel the, the easiest. While on the other hand, the least permeable, we can call that as impermeable, the water cannot pass through that clay. It's actually still sitting on top of the surface in that animation. So that's going to mean the water's going to stay runoff. When water hits a clay surface, it's very difficult for that water to infiltrate the ground. It's going to stay on the surface, which is what we call runoff. So I'm going to add that to our T-charts. Impermeable soil will lead to more runoff, where you have permeable so soil, which means the water can pass through, will lead to more infiltration. Another factor that can influence infiltration and runoff is soil saturation. I want you to think of the word saturation as to be filled with. If you are saturated, you are filled with water. Think of a dry paper towel versus a wet paper towel. A wet paper towel is saturated with water, it's already filled with water, while a dry paper towel is unsaturated, it's not filled with water. So here we have on the left side, unsaturated soil. That blue water is not completely filled within that soil, so it's unsaturated. There's room for water here. Well, on the other side picture, the soil is completely filled with water. The water reaches the surface where the grass is. That soil is completely saturated. So you're going to have more infiltration with unsaturated soil because there's room for water to fill up. On the other hand, when you're completely saturated with soil and saturated with water in your soil and the water is all the way up to the surface already, that's when runoff starts to happen because there's nowhere else for the water to go but to stay on the surface. There's no room for that water to go into the soil, so it becomes runoff on the surface of the earth. Anytime you have flooding events, that's when you have your ground is completely saturated. There's nowhere else for the water to go, so it must stay on the surface of the earth. So you have a large amount of runoff during major flooding events. So make sure you add to your t-chart, saturated soil is going to lead to more runoff. When you have unsaturated soil, you have room for the water. So as the water is hitting the ground, there's room for the ground to soak up that water with unsaturated soil, leading to more infiltration. Now finally, our last factor is vegetation. Vegetation, think of the word vegetable. Think of all the green vegetables that you need to eat to stay healthy. When you have a lot of vegetation, that means the land is covered with grass, plants, and trees. So the big picture here shows land with a lot of vegetation. The small picture on the bottom right side of the screen is showing the same area that has no more vegetation. When you have vegetation, plants love to soak up water. So when you have vegetation, there's more infiltration. Water is able to go into the ground a lot easier. But on the other hand, when you completely take away the vegetation, 
there's going to be more runoff because there's less plants to soak up that water. So that water is going to be more likely to stay on the surface. So the last thing you're going to add to those T charts, more runoff is when you have less vegetation. If you want more infiltration, you want to add more vegetation. The last thing I just want to go through today is showing you guys this term called the water table. What you might not realize is beneath the surface that we walk on is a level of water called the water table. If you ever go to the beach and you're digging in the sand, you eventually might hit water. That's the water table. That's the level of water that's stored underneath the ground. So one of the things that we need to think about is how do we raise the water table? How does that water table get higher and closer to the surface? And when could that water table get lower, further from the surface? So let's take a look here. If we add precipitation, that water table level is going to rise up closer to the surface. But when the sun comes out and evaporation occurs, that water table is going to lower. So when you have a lot of rainfall, you have plentiful water supply, that water table is going to rise up. On the other hand, during instances of drought, when the water is going to start to dry up and evaporate, that water table is going to fall.